Hey y'all, Sierra, aka Capricorn Moon Goddess, back with another video for you all. This is going to be a comparison of the Green Witch Oracle by Sherilyn Darcy and the Green Witch's Oracle deck, Embrace the Wisdom and Insight of Natural Magic by Aaron Murphy Hiscock. Now, both of these authors have other books or decks out. I think um, this might be the first Oracle deck for Erin Murphy Hiscock, but she does have several books in a Green Witch series. She has books about herbs. She has a gardening journal, I believe. She has um, the Green Witch's coloring book. So she's um, very knowledgeable about herbs and magic. And the same goes for Sherilyn Darcy. She has books out as well, and she also has other decks. I believe she has the Oracle of the Roses deck, and may, I think there's a deck called Magical Herbs or something. I have a few decks from her as well. So I really do like both of these, uh, the work from both of these women. The Green Witch Oracle came out first, and the Green Witch's Oracle deck just recently came out last week. I think I got the Green Witch Oracle uh, around last year or the year before that though. So if you're wondering which of these decks you should get if you um, feel like you're having to choose, let's go ahead and talk about each deck and maybe you can decide which deck you want or maybe you feel like both of these decks have a place in your collection <laughs> if you're somebody like me. Um, I like to have a variety of different things, even if they are similar. So let's get into the compare and contrast. What is the same about these decks and what are some things that are different? So the Green Witch Oracle, I believe only has 44 cards. Yeah, there's 44 cards in this deck. They both have very nice boxes. Both have similar color palettes. And then the Green Witches Oracle deck, I believe, has 50 cards. Um, so you get six more cards with the Green Witches Oracle deck. And um, both of them are around the same price. They're around $19 each. Right now, the Green Witch Oracle deck is on sale for about $17 on Amazon, but both of these like the regular retail price is like a little over $19. Let me turn my phone off because I'm going to be getting a bunch of notifications as usual. <laughs> and we don't need interruptions. So um, this is the box for the Green Witches Oracle deck. Very nice box. Very detailed. We've got the thumb thingies here to open. This box is easier to open now um, that I've opened it a few times. But the first time when I tried to open this box, it was really hard to open and it actually like damaged one of my nails trying to open it. But yeah, so this is the box for the Green Witch Oracle deck. And then this is the box for the Green Witch. It has the thumb thingies too. This one is by Rockpool Publishing. This one is by Simon and Schuster. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the guidebooks. And I went through all of the cards last night to see uh, what some of the similarities were between the cards. So we will go through um, that in a moment. <clears throat> all right, so here we have the guidebooks for both of these decks. And let me see what all y'all can see. It's kind of hard for me to be able to see. I'm trying to see how close up I can get. Okay, so about right here is good. So these are both of the decks. So let's look at the Green Witch Oracle deck first, or the guidebook. Very nice. It is um, colorful, so you do get 
full color pictures in the guidebook. Um, it is like kind of like a textured feeling guidebook. Like, I don't know how to say it, but it's not like leather, but it looks like kind of like it's leather, but it's not leather and it's textured. Um, there is a table of contents. Okay. This one doesn't have a table of contents. So that's why I'm pointing out something as small as a table of contents. This one has a table of contents, which makes it easy to find the cards. Um, there's an introduction, how to use the guidebook, and there are card spreads for those of you who like um, spreads. You can look in the guidebook as far as the different categories or the name of the card or the number of the card. So there's earth vegetables, there's fire herbs, there's water fruits and there's air flowers. Now, the reason why she's mentioning elements is because each card has an element on it. It also has a zodiac uh, correspondence as well. So um, you get more than the keywords, you get like an element, a zodiac correspondence and some other information on the cards as well as numbers. So for those of you who like spreads, there are a few spreads in here. All right, so let's take a look at one of the pages. So this is seven. Um, the keyword on this card is passion and the vegetable is beetroot. So this has vegetables, fruits, and herbs in it. Um, so you get a saying here, a quote, an addiction to gardening is not bad when you consider all the other choices in life. Then you get the meaning of the oracle card. Um, we have cultivation. So she's telling you how to garden or how to grow uh, or cultivate this type of fruit or vegetable because she is a gardener. So she's giving you some information about how to cultivate beetroot um, and then she has magical correspondences so she has the uses the spiritual uses the deities it's associated with the celestial or um, planets so Saturn or Venus and then the astrological sign so I'll read this page just so you can get an idea of what the guidebook has so um, this is the card passion and beetroot so Oracle meanings, look at the core of what usually motivates you for direction and a lifting of negative energies. Because a focus on self-love and developing a better understanding is needed, Beetroot supports your heart chakra and will show you that new projects, personal goals, and emotional healing are all in positive light with a chance of success. Challenges include family disagreements and getting stuck on the superficial. So that's a very nice, concise, but powerful um, blurb or <laughs> paragraph about the meaning of the card. The cultivation says beetroot seeds need to be soaked for half a day before planting. They can be sown all year in tropical areas from winter through to autumn in temperate zones and from mid spring to mid summer in colder areas. This plant requires a very friable soil that is fertile and a sunny position. Leaves can be harvested lightly and baby beets from 10 weeks. Pull up every second beet at this time to allow room for the rest of the crop to mature to full size in a few weeks, okay? So it's not gonna like tell you like all the steps for how to plant beetroot, but it's giving you some tips. Uh, for like when to plant it, how to prepare it before you plant it, and when to pull it up. She also has a spell as well. So passion spell. Boost passion in a relationship or rekindle motivation for a project in beat ink. So that means writing with um, ink from the beat, okay? One uh, or on a piece of paper, write your name and that of your lover or a project using the dry twig of a red flowering plant 
dip in one fourth cup of beetroot juice, wrap the twig in the paper and throw it in a fire saying, alive with the fire, the passion within us grows higher. Let me reread that in a better voice. <laughs> alive with the fire, the passion within us grows higher. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, she's giving you the meaning of the card. She's giving you a quote. She's giving you the uh, scientific or the plant name of the car of the plant. She's telling you how to cultivate the plant. She's giving you the magical correspondences, which include the astrological sign, the planet, the deities, and what you can use this particular thing for as far as spiritual use and she gives you a spell so there's a lot of information but it's very concise so there's a lot of decks that i have that have a lot of great information but it's so much information it's overwhelming to the point where it takes me a while to even like read the guidebook because i have to make sure i have the time and the attention span and the energy <laughs> to read everything that's in there so she did a really good job of including a lot of useful information in a very concise way so it's you can quickly look at it so she's got courage spells uh trust spells each spell goes with um each card so i really do like this guidebook i think it's very useful now let's look at the Green Witch's Oracle Deck Guidebook. Now, as I stated, there is no table of contents as far as being able to find the cards, okay? So you don't get like anything that has the pages where you can find each card. And also the cards are not in alphabetical order. Um, I have some decks that have guidebooks that don't have page numbers or they don't tell you like what page to find the card on. But the way that they um, make up for that is by putting each card in alph alphabetical order in the deck so you know like where to look in the deck. This doesn't have either. The cards are not in alphabetical order <laughs> and there's no index or anything to tell you like where or what page each card is on the cards themselves don't have numbers on them either so yeah <laughs> it's missing that one thing um but it does have the card spreads and things like that for those of you who um like to use spreads and it is in color as well so both of these books are in color um, this is also a very concise guidebook. There isn't as much information here, so I prefer the Green Witch Oracle Guidebook over the Green Witch's Oracle Deck Guidebook, okay? I prefer Sherilyn's Guidebook to Aaron's because it's, it's hard trying to say the names of the decks because they're basically the same name okay so i'm just gonna say the author's name so i prefer sherilyn's guidebook to aaron's um i feel like i don't really get much from this guidebook there i really don't need it the card has enough information um now the guidebook for aaron it has a concise meaning of the card it has the card in color um, so chamomile, gentleness, relaxation, sleep, card meaning. With its gentle energy and flavor, chamomile suggests that perhaps you need to slow down a bit. There's something in your life that is draining you or wearing you down. A relationship, a situation, and the chamomile card directly reminds you that if you're in a state of exhaustion, you won't be able to do the work that will be required in the future either at all or to the extent you'll need to chamomile advice invites you to take a pause step away from your work whatever kind it may be and give your mind body and spirit time to find balance and equilibrium then there's a reflection um which is like a question you can ask yourself how ha or sorry y'all i really am it's hard for me to talk and it's hard for me to think because I don't feel good today. <laughs> and I should be resting instead of doing this video. So y'all gonna have to bear with me. 
Okay, so reflection. Have you struggled to give yourself permission to rest recently? Oh my God, that is so funny because I just said I need to be resting instead of doing this video. So I will say kudos for that. <laughs> I mean, this deck really um, does actually, it's very practical. I'll say it's very practical. Um, both of these decks are very practical and you can get like a short message that really hits home. I literally just said, it's hard for me to talk. It's hard for me to think. It's hard for me to get through this video because I'm not feeling well and I need to rest. But I felt like I needed to get up and get this done. I have so many things I need to get done. Um, it's the weekend. It's Saturday. I should be resting. So I don't know. Maybe I'll take heed to what this says. Yeah, right. We know I'm not about to do that. When I'm done with this video, I got other stuff I need to do. <laughs> but anyway, I like how that, you know, kind of spoke to me like, girl, you know, you should be resting. Okay. So you could use this for journal prompts. You could use this deck for like daily card pulls and then use the reflection as a journal prompt to write about. Um, so this one is the Green Witch Oracle by Sherilyn. I would say uh, the guidebook is really good for doing like magical work or doing spiritual work or doing rituals and things like that. If you need ideas for that, you can turn to this guidebook. The Green Witch Oracle deck by Aaron is good for like daily uh, journal pulls, one card pulls, self-reflection, things like that. Now let's get into the cards. Um, I will say that, in my opinion, the Green Witch's Oracle deck, this one by Aaron, is more comprehensive. I think it covers more ground. I think it has a lot more information on the cards, um, a lot more keywords, and it just has a uh, talks about more topics in my opinion so i'll just leave it at that for now um let's go ahead and get into the cards so these are the cards that i picked out from each deck that seem similar to me so we're starting with rosemary from each deck all right so Let me zoom in to make sure y'all can see this. As you can see, I forgot to talk about this, but um, the Green Witch Oracle by Sherilyn has shiny, glossy cardstock, so it does glare when I am doing a video. So I don't even know if y'all can see this card clearly because the ring light might be um, creating a glare. The Green Witch Oracle by Erin, it's more of a matte. It's like a little bit glossy, like a tiny bit, but it's more so matte. So if you are doing videos, like if you make videos like I do, where you're doing readings, um, you may want to go with the Green Witch's Oracle by Erin because there's no glare. Yeah, because I'm looking up at the camera right now and I see it's glaring for um, this one right here. Let me see if I put it up higher. Can y'all see it? All right, so this is the memory card from the Green Witch's Oracle and the herb is Rosemary. So the difference between these decks is also the keyword placement and the herb placement. Um, this deck has the keyword first and then the herb and the other deck has the herb and then the keywords. So this is memory rosemary and then you have the number 16 and this is rosemary remembrance loyalty and faithfulness so the card 
by Erin, which is in my right hand. I don't know if it'll be in the right or the left for y'all, but this one has more keywords. You get three keywords. On this one, you only get one keyword. So there is a little bit more as far as keywords to work with. On the Green Witches Oracle deck. However, um, like I said with the Green Witch Oracle by Sherilyn, she also includes the planetary uh, correspondences, whether it's earth, fire, or water, or um, air. So she gives you the element, the planet, um, the astrological correspondence. So all of that is on the card. This is a symbol for the element and then you have the sun here you have a zodiac here and you have a number so i mean you don't get that with this card so it just depends on what all you're looking for do you like to tie all of those things in to your readings or in your readings or are you more so of a keyword person okay so these are the rosemary cards this is the fertility card with watermelon on it from the first deck. And then this is the fruit card with achievement and success on it. Okay, so achievement and success could be similar to fertility or like the empress. So that's why I put these two together. Um, but also I wanted to compare these two cards as well since they both have the blackberries on them so this one says wholeness and this one says achievement and success so this is what the cards look like um side by side when they have similar fruits or herbs on them And then I also wanted to compare this card with the same card because they have the same keyword. So we have success on this deck is represented by peppermint, but success on this deck is represented by just fruit as a whole, like the fruits of your labor, okay? Um, I think people could make the connection between fruit and success easier then they could with peppermint and success because of the saying the fruits of your labor um so i wonder why she chose peppermint for success here let me check to see we've got numbers so I, you see how quick i was able to find that <laughs> it might be a little bit harder to find the card you want using this deck okay so why does she correspond peppermint and success Peppermint indicates rapid progress, a quick return, or increase of positive energies. And if you are seeking an answer, it is a loud and firm yes. Okay, so she says she chose peppermint for success because peppermint indicates rapid growth. For me, I typically uh, associate peppermint with protection um, or like opening, removing blockages, things like that. That's what I associate peppermint with. So it's interesting to get her perspective on that. We also have happiness and happiness, okay? So let me put this card up here so y'all can see it. This is the happiness. And then this is the happiness card. Okay, so happiness, they have margarine on here. And for the other deck, they have the sun representing happiness. Healing, energy, happiness, comfort, and joy. And then here we just have the one keyword happiness, but we have the other things on the card as well. <clears throat> and I'm sorry y'all about the glare. Okay, we have gratitude and gratitude. So here we have the pink rose and gratitude. And here we have the altar, gratitude and releasing burdens. So some of these cards have 
three keywords and some of them have two. And let me pick this card up so y'all can see it. This is really frustrating to have to keep picking this up because I'm very short. So I can't see what y'all can see. Like, cause I have my camera, like an overhead camera. So I have to stand up to be able to do a close up of this card. Um, so like I said, if you are a reader and you make videos showing like your cards, this one is going to glare. <laughs> so that's the frustrating part about this deck on uh, my left. But the cards are beautiful. So I want y'all to be able to clearly see them. All right, so this is them side by side. All right, so we also have clarity for both decks. This card has the carrot for clarity, which makes sense. Um, I think I've heard a lot that carrots can be good for your eyes. And then this one has the earthworm for clarity which I would not, <laughs> I would have to read the guidebook for this to see why they're associating the earthworm with that. Um, but it's clarity and rumination that's on this card. So these are the two clarity cards. We have longevity and stability. These were the closest two that I could associate with each other for these keywords. So long, Jared. I told y'all I cannot talk right now. <laughs> Longevity, chrysanthemum, and then soil, stability, and simplicity. Maybe I shouldn't talk as much since it's so hard for me to get it out. Like when I tell y'all, this is my sign that after I do this video, I need to chill out for real. Okay, so we have the two wisdom cards. So Sherilyn's deck uses the bay leaf for wisdom and Aaron's deck uses sage for wisdom, which we all know sage represents wisdom. Um, and then the keywords are wisdom, purification, and harmony for Aaron's deck. We have Regeneration and Renewal, Tarragon for Regeneration, and Leaves for Renewal. Okay, we have two Basil cards here. So Sherilyn's deck associates Basil with Trust. And Aaron's deck associates basil with prosperity, luck, and love, which this is the same way I associate basil. So this makes sense to me. We also have the two grounding cards. So we've got the potato for Sherilyn's deck and earth for Aaron's deck. Okay, these are the two time cards for each deck. Sherilyn associates time with courage and Aaron associates time with presence and self-awareness. I like that both of these decks have time because time is one of the essential oils that I use a lot. So I like that they have that in there. Okay, we've got the two abundance cards. Sherilyn associates abundance with grape and Erin associates abundance with mint. And her keywords are abundance, persistence, and proliferation. Is this deck upside down? <laughs> yes, it is, okay. So we've got the protection card from each deck. Sherilyn associates protection with onion 
and Aaron associates protection with salt, which a lot of us um, associate protection with salt or garlic. So it's interesting that Sherilyn chose onion instead of garlic. We have the leadership cards from both decks. Sherilyn associates leadership with broccoli and Aaron associates leadership with carnelian. And her keywords are leadership, energy, and creativity. So this would be more fire sign type energy or fire element energy. I wonder if she has fire element here. Let me see. Number six. I don't know what the symbols mean um, for the elements. I don't know if she tells you what the symbols mean. Hold on. Let me look at the front of the book to see. I don't know if she clearly says what the symbols mean, but you can look at the number. Number six, leadership, broccoli. It's under earth. So this symbol right here, this upside down um, triangle with the line through it is the earth symbol. So she associates leadership with earth and she associates leadership with more fire type energy, which both of those make sense. Okay, so we have the two strength cards. Sherilyn associates strength with fennel and Aaron associates strength with the oak tree. We have two purification cards. So purification is associated with snapdragon. Ooh, I need to write that down. Hold on, because I'm making... Um, I'm making some oil that has to do with dragons. So I'm looking for things that correspond with dragon. <laughs> I forgot about Snapdragon. Let me uh, text that to myself really quick. All right. Okay, so I'm going to read this page when I'm done. So Sherilyn associates snapdragon with purification and Aaron associates rain with purification which rain is a little bit more obvious um but yeah I'm looking forward to reading the snapdragon passage okay we have the cleansing or the clearing cards so the cleansing card for Sherilyn's deck is represented by lemon and then we have the broom representing energy clearing and freshening from Aaron's deck. We have vitality from both decks. Vitality is represented by fig for Sherilyn and by the pine tree for Aaron. And I love fig and pine. So... Yeah, happy to see those in this in these decks. Um, we have the Tranquility cards. Tranquility is represented by Violet for Sherilyn's deck and by Lavender for Aaron's deck. Both of those make sense. Aaron's card says Tranquility, Kindness, and Self-Care. All right, we have positivity from both decks, represented by Marigold in Sherilyn's deck and represented by Moss Agate in positivity or in Aaron's deck. Oh, I thought she only had one crystal in this deck. So, so far we've got two crystals in um, Aaron's deck. Okay, so we've got energy in Sherilyn's deck and we have invigoration in Aaron's deck. So energy is represented by the orange in Sherilyn's deck 
and invigoration and empowerment is represented by potion in Aaron's deck. We have transition and transformation. So transition is represented by cauliflower in Sherilyn's deck. And transformation and transience is represented by the butterfly in Aaron's deck. We have two focus cards. So focus is represented by stock in Sherilyn's deck and is represented by Sickle in Aaron's deck. And last but not least, we have divination and intuition. Divination is represented by Chives in Sherilyn's deck and by the and intuition is represented by the moon in Aaron's deck. So those are the cards that I felt were similar to each other or the same. Um, there's quite a few cards in each deck that are unique to each deck. This is the stack for Sherilyn and this is the stack for um, Aaron. Aaron's um, card stock is thicker. It's more sturdy. So that's why um, it looks like there's way more cards in Aaron's deck than there are in Sherilyn's deck, but there's only six more cards, but the card stock is thicker, so that's why. Um, but some of the keywords that I really like in um, Sherilyn's deck, the agreement, I don't see that a lot. I don't see the word refinement a lot. Um, stimulation, I like that. I really like different type of words because a lot of these decks are starting to get repetitive with the words. They all have the same words. So yeah, I really like stimulation, agreement, and refinement as far as unique cards for the Green Witch Oracle by Sherilyn. And I will say um, the Green Witches Oracle deck by Erin has just a lot more words to work with. And I'm a words person. I really like to have different type of words in my decks. So the word tend, I really like that. You don't see that a lot. Um, she's got different types of elements, fog, um, snow is in here. She's got the... Seasons, autumn, winter, all of that in here. She's got fruits, she's got vegetables, she's got herbs, um, crystals. I mean, there's just, I do feel like the Green Witches Oracle deck by Erin Murphy is more comprehensive. Like I said, it just covers more ground. Preserve, I really like this keyword. Watering can. Yeah, there's just a lot in this deck. I like this walking staff card. So, yeah. This is what the backs of each deck looks like. So this is the Green Witch's Oracle back. And then this is the Green Witch Oracle back. So this is what they look like side by side. Um, as far as which deck I would probably use the most when I'm doing readings, um, I would probably use this deck the most, the Green Witches Oracle deck by uh, Aaron, just because it's more comprehensive. It covers more ground. It has more words in it. I'm really a words type of person and I don't like to have to look at the guidebook. I like to be able to intuitively read. Um, with Sherilyn's deck, I would have to look up these symbols for the um, elements. And But what I like about that is that I would be learning from this deck. So I would be learning more from this deck than I would be from this deck because I would learn what the different symbols mean for um, the 
elements and then I would learn more about what the astrological signs and glyphs mean because I still have a hard time. I think this could be Scorpio, this little M here, but I'm not sure. So after I would use this for, you know, X amount of time, eventually I would be able to remember what these symbols mean. I've had this deck for a while and I don't use it as much. So I do feel like I would be using the Green Witches Oracle deck by Erin more often. Um, but I do like both decks. I'm happy that I have both decks. I don't regret having both decks, especially because this one came out first. Some people may say, dang it, I wish I would have waited and just got the Green Witches Oracle deck. I don't feel that way. I'm glad that I have both of these decks. Um, Another thing, like I mentioned before, as a reader who does videos where I'm showing my cards, this deck would be easier for me to use and better for me to use because I do use a ring light. Um, and when you're making videos, you want to have good lighting, but at the same time, you want people to be able to see the cards and the glossy cards make it hard for us to do both when we're trying to do readings. So if I had to absolutely choose one deck, I would go with the Green Witches Oracle deck by Erin Murphy just because it's more practical for me to use as a reader who does videos where I'm showing my cards. Um, so let me know in the comment section which deck you would prefer or would you be like me and buy both of them <laughs> both of them have really good keywords in it like i said i have other decks by Sherilyn. i love her oracle of the roses deck it's so pretty it's gilded with pink on the edges so um which deck would you prefer if you only had to choose one or are you gonna be like nope i'm not choosing i want both of them <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, especially because it was so hard for me to get through the video because I'm not feeling well today, but y'all know how I am. I'm raw, I'm real, and um, I don't like to take out like bloopers and stuff like that, so I'm leaving this video just how it is. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Please like, share, and subscribe. Toodles!